In this video, we're going to take a look at creating translucent effects using speculate materials and mediums in Octane for Maya. And for this video, I'm using the Octane Materials 03.scene, a uh, simple scene, little background structure here. And then we have four different examples here of spheres with a little helix wrapped around it. And they all have a different specular material applied to them. The specular material has uh, similar settings. So if we take a look in the attribute editor for the specular material, you can see that I have a very dark or low reflection value and transmission set to about 0.8. Um, so let's talk about creating just a basic translucent kind of effect. So I'll select this sphere here and go to its material node and just simply raise the roughness. And as I raise the roughness, it's going to scatter not only the uh, reflections on the surface, but also the refractions as light goes through the surface. It's important to note that I am rendering with uh, the path trace kernel type. If I switch to direct light, it'll be a bit faster, but it will kind of affect the way the uh, way the translucency works. So, um, but you can take a look here. Uh, using path tracing and if I start to increase the reflection on the outside you can see there's a reflection highlight. So this is great for creating frosted glass or uh, plastic or things like that. Not necessarily good for true subsurface uh, effects such as uh, subsurface scattering like in skin or wax or things like that. But it's very easy to use and quick to set up. Okay so now let's take a look at this uh, specular material right here. And I'm going to set, let's set the index to one so it's completely see-through. Then I'm going to go down in the attribute editor to the medium slot and click on the checker box next to medium to open up the create render node window. And let's add an octane absorption medium. So this simulates the effect of a surface absorbing light as it passes through it. So it looks black, which is not terribly entertaining. Uh, so the first thing we want to do is adjust the scale. So the scale is going to vary depending on the size of the object and the size of the scene. So if we bring this down to point 0.1, we get back to that kind of transparent effect. So let's try 0.25, maybe 0.5, let's just try 1. So as I raise the scale, you can see how that changes uh, the effect that the light has as it goes through the surface. Now I can start to raise the absorption. And then let's go back to the specular node and see what happens when we start to raise the refraction. So if I set this to 1.5, let's try 1.2. And the other thing we could do is try a color for the absorption. So I'm going to go in here and add a spectrum node. And let's make this like a bright red. So what it's what's going on is basically the absorption node is causing the surface to absorb red wavelengths of light as they pass through the surface. This is important to understand because it explains this setting right here, invert absorption. If the surface is absorbing red light, then you would not expect to see the surface as being red. You would expect it to be the complement of red. Uh, the invert absorption option, which is on by default, kind of reverses that. So it, it's a little bit more intuitive. We're seeing a red color because we're adding a red color here. But to be physically accurate, we would turn that off and you would see the complement of that red color, which is this kind of turquoise. So let's get rid of this color for a second and go back to this value. So now we have a zero. Now we have a value that goes from zero to one. So a few seconds ago when I had invert absorption on, we were getting kind of a weird effect. When I have this at zero, meaning less absorption, we're getting more absorption here. As I bring this up and you figure this would be more absorption, I seem to be getting less absorption. That's because invert absorption is on. So if I turn this off, now we get something that's a bit more intuitive. So I can start to increase the scale. Let's set this to like 10, 20, 50, 150, 200, and so on. As you can sort of see how it's affecting the surface the more I bring this up. The volume step length. Uh, affects the accuracy of the calculation. So the lower this value is, the more accurate the effect will be. And this will be more apparent when you get into subsurface scattering or volumetric effects or that kind of thing. Um, but decreasing it will also, can also increase render times. 
So that's absorption. Now let's take a look at the scattering node. So I'm going to select this surface, go to its specular material node, and let's set the index of refraction to one. And now let's add a medium. So I'll click down here on this checker box next to medium. And this time I'll choose the octane scattering medium. If we look at the options within the attribute editor for the scattering medium, you'll notice that at the top we have the absorption options, which are very similar to the options we see in the absorption node. All right, so we go back here. We have our absorption value, uh, a slot for textures, and also the invert absorption option. Let's lower the scale. Let's make this one. And let's add a color here. Let's make this red as well. So you can see right now it looks very similar to this, except there's no refraction on it. Uh, we also have the scattering options, which scatters light as it passes through the surface. And now we start to get into something that's a little bit closer to a subsurface scattering effect. As I increase this, it scatters the light more and more. Then, of course, I can also increase the scale. And then the other option I want to play with is the phase, which adjusts whether the light is being scattered more towards the uh, front or the back of the surface. So if I put this as a negative value, we're going to get more of a backscattering effect. And as I put this more towards the front, we get a front scattering effect. So it does have a big impact on how the light behaves as it passes through the surface. Generally speaking, when you're working with mediums, you want to keep your reflection fairly low on the specular material. Uh, because reflection basically means light is bouncing off the surface. If the reflection is too high, then of course that means that light can't penetrate the surface, which is the whole point of mediums. So if I increase the uh, index of refraction here, you can see you get this kind of effect. But that's not to say that it's completely illegal. It's just something to be aware of while you're working with mediums. The other thing you can do with the scattering medium is you can add an emission so if I click on this and add, say, texture emission, you can see I can actually make it emit light. So let's bring the power down a little bit. We get that kind of looks interesting. You can also use medium nodes to create so-called God rays or volumetric lighting. Uh, I'm using a scene called God Rays 01, which you can check out this setup. Uh, it's pretty easy to set up, but there are a few things to be aware of when you're doing this. For one thing, you should be conscious that your scene scale is going to affect uh, how the light and the volume uh, behave. So that'll just require some adjustment uh, as you're working with the, uh, the medium nodes. But as you can see, I have some light coming through this window here, um, and it's shining from an area light. And we're creating this kind of fog-like effect. So let's switch over to Viewport 2.0 so we can see the setup. Within this scene, I have an octane light, which is just a standard area light uh, with very high power to it. And uh, I also have a polygon tube that has been parented to it. And this polygon tube is just being used to narrow the beam and make it more of a spotlight. And it just has a black diffuse material applied to it. So this is shining through this sort of window-like polygon surface here. Which you can see right here. Uh, nothing special about that, it just has a diffuse material applied. What's creating the actual volumetric effect is this cube, which you can see that surrounds the scene. So I'll switch to wireframe view so you can see what's going on a little bit better. The cube has a specular material applied to it, and the specular material has no reflection, so the reflection is set to zero, so it's 100% transparent, and index of refraction is set to one so that there is no uh, distortion caused by uh, refraction. Uh, the most important part of the setup, of course, is the medium. So down here under medium, uh, I've attached a scattering medium. So if we take a look at the attributes here, this is where you're going to do most of the work in terms of tuning the effect. So the first thing you probably want to pay attention to is the scale. This will need to be adjusted uh, depending on the size of the scene. So typically for most scenes, you probably want to reduce this. And the default setting is 100. So you'll have to play with this. I would bring it down to a fairly low value at first and then start to adjust it as necessary while you're tuning the effect. 
The next thing you want to pay attention to is the absorption and the scattering. Generally, you'll want to raise these, although these could be adjusted to tune the effect or to color the fog by attaching like an RGB spectrum node or something like that. And then finally, the phase is going to determine where the scattering happens within the effect itself. Um, so we'll take a look at that in a second. But the other thing I wanted to point out is that rendering camera should be outside of the cube in order to see the effect or have it rendered properly. You also want to keep the light source inside the volume object. So the cube here that has a speculum material applied to it, I have both the light and the tube that's focusing the light uh, inside the surface. So let's switch over to Octane Render and take a look at it. And then, as you can see, if I move into the volume at a certain point, the effect goes away, so we don't see it anymore. So if you're not seeing the effect, double check and see that your camera is outside of the volume. Uh, and then you can start to adjust some of these effects. For instance, uh, the scattering and absorption. You can see immediately these could be used to basically customize the effect, depending on what you're trying to go for. And then, of course, the phase as well. So if I bring this over this direction, we get this type of look. It's a bit more subtle as I bring it closer to a value of one. It's a little bit less subtle. And then as I raise the scale, if I make the scale too high, let's say I set this to 10, then it'll be too dense and the light won't be able to go through the volume. So as I lower this, if I bring it down to 0.1, you can see that makes it much brighter as well. Volume step length can be used to adjust the quality. The lower this value is, the uh, more accurate the effect is. Uh, it may add to render time depending on the scene. And then the other thing you want to pay attention to is the render kernel that you're working with. So I'm currently using the direct light kernel. You can, if I switch to path trace, you can see the effect is very different. So if you're getting a result that is not what you want, you can try adjusting the kernel in the kernel settings and see if that gives you what you need. That's the basics of working with sort of a god ray or volumetric lighting effect using mediums.